At the beginning of 2015, the Natural History Museum in London announced that it would be replacing Dippy the Diplodocus, who had stood in the Central Hall since 1979, with a blue whale skeleton. This skeleton was to be taken from the Mammal Hall, where it hung above the much larger model of the same species. With this change, it became apparent that the Mammal Hall, which hadn't been updated since the 1980s, was overdue a makeover. As a consequence, in late 2016, I hustled down to the NHM to photograph both Dippy for one last time, and as much of the Mammal Hall as I could manage. Unbeknownst to me, someone at the Natural History Museum had the same idea, but instead they took a lot of high-quality photographs of the original Natural History Museum as it stood in 2016, and uploaded them to Google, so it now acts like a Google map that you can access and visit the Natural History Museum in its older state whenever you want to. In July 2017, I returned just after the Central Hall reopened, both to see the new exhibits and to see what had changed in the Mammal Hall. They moved the giraffe. That's it. So at time of recording, it's March 2024, and the Mammal Hall has been closed since September 2023. That was until two days ago when it reopened. And of course, I had to see what was up. So first things first, it is only the main hall where the whales and hooved mammals are displayed that has had some work done. The mammal corridor is still there in its cringy pandas are raccoons and hyenas are dogs 1980s glory. At least there's a Smilodon in the glass case again, because in 2017 it was swapped out with a warthog for a few years. As we enter the hall, you will see that the painted wooden whale and dolphin decorations have been removed as have the bats from the other side, which is a shame. Another big change that is immediately obvious is the removal of all the animals which stood in front of the whale's face. These originally represented the six orders of hooved mammals. Artiodactyls, elephants, hyraxes, perisodactyls, sirenians, and cetaceans. We now know, thanks to genetic research, that elephants, hyraxes, and sirenians are all panungulate aphrotheres much more closely related to aardvarks, tenrecs, golden moles, and, most ironically of all, elephant shrews, than to any of the hooved mammals. Cetaceans, on the other hand, are known to be a group of artiodactyls, most closely related to hippos. So, from a scientific perspective alone, I think this is an improvement. But what's more, it also means that you can now walk all the way around the blue whale model and get much closer to it than ever before. On one side of the whale, there stands a skeleton of an Arsinoetherium, another member of the Aphrotheres. When the exhibition was first created, however, it was intended to represent a stem ungulate, alongside various so-called condyliths. The rest of these have been removed, and currently the skeleton is unlabeled, which is unfortunate. Next, there's a behind-the-scenes area with a suspiciously elephant-shaped object. As we walk alongside the whale, we notice that many artiodactyls that used to stand next to it have been removed, until we get to the whale's closest relative, the hippos. The hippo display is much reduced from what it used to be, and at the moment the hippopotamus gorgop's skull is absent, although the label shows that it should be back soon. The hippos currently stand where the megaloceros used to be. These Irish elk are currently in the section of the Darwin Centre showing how museum staff clean and repair specimens for display, so hopefully they will come back too, once the work has completed. The artiodactyl displays are for the most part the same, but some of the exhibits have been removed to create space. The mountain species have been completely removed, and the arctic species now stand in their space in a new case. The information on them is limited to just the card describing each animal. Some of the pigs have been removed, but the Find a Pig interactive game and the legendary From Forests to Grasslands animated documentary are still present in all their 80s cheesiness to entertain museum guests for years to come. The Savannah Artiodactyls are all the same, besides receiving a well-deserved clean-up, as are those of the desert. However, the origin of camels display is gone. The camel here is labelled as Camelus ferus, the wild Bactrian. However, after visiting London Zoo the same day, I am fairly confident that the picture on this placard is of a domestic Bactrian camel. As for the stuffed animal itself, I'm unsure. Let me know what you think. We are now on the left side of the blue whale, where the elephants stand. 
The old telephone displays have been replaced by a modern screen that shows footage of wild elephants as well as playing their sounds. From the whale's head to its tail, there are skulls and reconstructive models of prehistoric elephants, although their order has been reversed from what it originally was. I was pleased to see that the Morotherium model has been repaired after losing its lower jaw, and also that the accompanying placard highlights that this is no longer an up-to-date depiction of the animal. I do think displaying the animals in sequential order like this gives the false impression that they form a direct evolutionary lineage rather than being disparate relatives of the same order. As previously mentioned, there's no dead ends here, although to achieve this some of the displays, such as the woolly mammoth skull, are absent. But overall I am fairly positive about these changes. Another fan favourite display, the compare your weight to an animal game, is still here, as are other displays explaining elephant anatomy. The hyraxes are mostly the same, with the exception of the fossils being absent, as well as the old Hyrax City documentary, which played on a screen little bigger than an iPad and went on longer than any child has patience for. Truly, the 80s were a different time. The Perissodactyls haven't had any major updates, which means the Elasmotherium still has a gigantic horn. The rhinos have been turned around so that they face people walking around the whale, and the Sumatran rhino has been swapped out with the white rhino that used to stand at the entrance of the hall. I hope they find space for the Sumatran rhino somewhere, as I would hate for this critically endangered species to be left out. One final big change downstairs is the removal of the horse evolution display, despite the case next to it still mentioning its existence. This is no major loss as far as I'm concerned, as the way the horse has been used as an evolutionary case study is flawed. If you want to know more, I recommend the book Life's Grandeur by Stephen Jay Gould. As we travel upstairs to the Cetacean and Cyrenian displays, we find that little has changed. Unfortunately, once again it is the fossils that bear the brunt of the removals, as well as the models of extinct whales. And yet at the same time, the Mesionychids are still depicted as the ancestors of whales! The only other major change I noticed was the appearance of the Dugong model that originally stood in the hall entrance, now in a blue featureless case on the left side of the whale's head, with a sign incorrectly showing where you are. This is one area I couldn't for the life of me remember what used to be there. Google shows a dolphin. Not entirely sure what changing one for the other achieves besides making the display more confusing. And that ends our tour of the Mammal Hall. It showcases the difficult trade-off museums have to make between displaying as many interesting things as possible and ensuring that they are all correctly labelled and sufficiently educational with making the space accessible to all and avoiding crowding. I think opening the space around the front of the whale is refreshing, and I am glad that the outdated taxonomy of these animals is starting to be replaced. But I also think that it's a shame that so many great fossils, models and taxidermy mounts will probably not see the light of day for a long time. The exhibit is clearly still a work in progress, so I have no doubt some things will be back. But how many, and which ones? Only time will tell.